and see if you can hear me. Can you hear me yet? You can? Oh, good. Go to the other live chat and tell them, say she started a new stream. I don't know how to go back. You just go back. Hopefully they'll find me. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll bring it up. I'll show you. You have to click on the the little thing that says live chat. Oh, all right. Thank you. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. That's all right. Thank you. You should make me a 10 pound bill. Yeah. I hope that would help with my anxiety. Yeah, I can put one together for you. I have to sell one for my channel anyways. Okay. So. Thank you. You're welcome. After Christmas. Oh, hello. I wait until after Christmas. Shamira, I hope I'm saying your name right. Yes, I came back. I could not believe I lost sound. Um, as soon as my laptop was, you know, battery was low, I plugged it in and all the, everything went away. <laughs> So I thought I'd better just start streaming again. So I hope everyone else uh, finds me over here and um, comes back. So um, now do you sew memory bears and stuff like that? You can type that in the box, Savannah. What? Yeah, you said it right. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, yeah. Do you sew um, memory bears and stuff like that? Ooh, that heater. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so I have the bare legs sewn. Yes, I sew memory bears. Ooh, balloon. Oh, stuff balloons. Like um, where you put like toys and stuff in the balloons. Because that is the neatest thing I've ever seen. Whoops. Oh, I'd love to see that. That is so neat. You're very talented. That's definitely for sure because there is no way. Listen, I'm lucky if I can blow up a balloon and tie it, let alone figure out how to get stuff in the balloon. <laughs> but I have seen those. I always thought they were so pretty. Um, growing up, I remember seeing where they had like a heart-shaped balloon inside the circular balloon, but it was always like magic, you know, just, just the neatest thing to see. But that's definitely cool that you can put a memory bear in the balloon. Like, that's very, very cool. Oh, thank you. Are we connected on Facebook? I need to go check. Um, and then I can go see your work. I'd love to see that. Um, what size bears do you like to make? Do you like to make all kinds of uh, memory bears? Or do you like to stick to like one type? Uh, a lot of my students... Oh, we're not connected. Okay. Um, well, I'm still going to find you on Facebook. I want to see what these look like. Um but like a lot of my memory bear and keepsake sewing students have, oh yeah, one size. Yep. They, that's what a lot of my students prefer is also just making like one size and then getting really, really good at it um, to the point where they get comfortable adding things um, to it. Oh, my grandson, he's teething. He's so sad right now. Poor baby. He's eight months old and he's just having the toughest time 
teething. Oh, don't check on him. See if he needs some loving. His mom and dad are both with him. So if you hear him in the background, he's just so upset. <laughs> teething is terrible, isn't it? It's just, oh, I feel so bad. At least they have like that baby, um, they have like this organic stuff you can use for teething babies now. But when I had my five kids, they did not have that kind of stuff. Okay, so like I'm just sewing the um, pad to the bare foot. Um, and then the one side is the baby blanket and then the minky. Yeah. Um, how long have you been sewing? Uh, memory bears. I've technically been sewing various things since I was seven, but memory bears, I've only been sewing since, what was it? 2000, it feels like it's been so long ago. 2000, I think 17. I guess that's kind of a while, isn't it? Oh, well. But um, let's see here. There we go. Like I said, I don't, I won't be able to finish the bear on live tonight. Um, but I just thought I'd get on here for a little bit as I assemble the bear. Um, and then, uh, just share some of my tips. Like, um, I went ahead and sewed the handmade rose patch that the mom wanted on this bear. I went ahead and machine stitched it onto the bear's front, the belly part. Um, I've been sewing on and off since 1998. Oh, 2020. Oh, so you're fairly new to the Memory Bear um, family. <laughs> they they are a lot of fun. Once you get over that learning curve, um, they they can be a lot of fun to make. I think it's one of those things that you have to really really like it, or you don't want to sew them. <laughs> Because depending on what style, and there are so many styles of memory bears um, out there. But once you find the style you like to sew, it's it's great, isn't it? It's just, it's comfortable. It's fun. Oh, yeah, the neck. Oh, yeah, I finally came up with my own way of sewing these bears. So I didn't have to mess with that neck. Um, that was the one thing I thought... Um, I was going to change. And so that's what I did. I have a playlist on here of how I sew my bears together just so I did not have to follow the instructions of trying to get the head into the neck and then stitch around it. Um, but uh, let me see. I'm glad I found you. Again. Yeah. Hey Baker. Yes. I'm so sorry. Isn't that crazy? So my laptop battery flashed, so I knew I needed to plug it in. As soon as I plugged it in, started losing all kinds of things. Yeah, I'll set these over there for you. Thank you. I'll put them down here for the night. Yeah. All right. Thank you, honey. Yeah. All right. I just hit them under the table, Savannah. And I'm glad that there is some sound now. And I have to move my little... I, every once in a while I have to move my space heater because it gets a little bit warm on the back side, if you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Ouch. Are you guys on my um, soapreneur.com newsletter? Uh, let me see. Oops. Let me see if I can type it in. I give out like a lot of the business freebies and stuff like that. Um, if you're, you know, if you're into the, if you made this into a business, I give out a lot of freebies in that newsletter. Um, but now this part, whenever I sew on the pad of the foot, I like it to take it just really slowly actually. For one, um, pens are sharp. <laughs> and two, I'm sewing with Minky. And Minky slides 
all over the place. Oh, I was still on the other end for, oh no, Baker, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's one thing you definitely can get over here is some free entertainment <laughs> on this channel because you don't ever know what's going to happen when I go live. That's what scares me about going live. Because <laughs> one day, one day I might have my own little private studio space again where you know, it's just me and you guys, and um, I've been really trying hard to get 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, that's been my goal all year, and um, I don't know. It was just it's just a goal that I've had. I've had for two. I've actually had that goal for two years, but this year I'm really like plugging away and really um, trying to get to that 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Yes, Baker, I'm so glad you made it to the live. Thank you so much. And I feel so bad because I didn't even know I was going to go live. And I I kind of like to tell my newsletters, um, subscribers too, when I go live. And I just, it was literally just like on a whim. Um, and Shamira, thank you so much for coming to my live too. Um, and Savannah, I think Savannah's already gone. But I thought I would go ahead and sew these two little pads on and then probably just call it a night because the first live was an hour long. Um, but uh, anyways, let's see if I can't get this pad going. <clears throat> I've been building my um, new website. So I changed my LLC. It was Sewing with Steam LLC. Let me see. And some sewing groups on Facebook. I want to share your channel name. Oh, my goodness, Baker Wannabe. That would be so wonderful if you would do that for me. I truly appreciate your support and you being here. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so here's the one foot or leg. I, sh I keep saying foot, but <laughs> there's one leg. <lake. laughs> So oh, let me move this stuff out of the way. Um, ouch. But so I went ahead and I always, one thing about Minky is it'll, it slides. Have you ever sewn with Minky? Oh my goodness. I see some people sewing with it and they act like, you know, it's nothing. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'll ever get comfortable with Minky like that. <laughs> but I guess practice makes perfect, right? <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can't get around here. <clears throat> now, Baker, did you say that you make memory bears or you're just thinking about it or, um, whoops. I've never still with, oh yeah, Minky. Oh, I know me too. It's not, I have to be honest. It's not my favorite fabric <laughs> and knits are not my favorite fabric either. Um, but I, I, I will accept minky and, and knits. Um, but again, it's, they're not my favorite either, <laughs> but okay. And I think the secret was to really use some good, um, iron on inter or stabilizer. <laughs> um, so this leg is done and now I'm going to go ahead and sew the pad of this foot on. Whenever I was teaching my sewing students how to do these, <laughs> it was something to tell you. Let me tell you, it was it was something um, because just like sewing the neck causes frustration, so that's why I show my students all of the uh, all the tricks that I've taught myself over the years. Um, whenever you like pin the pad of this foot on, um, so like on this bear right here. The only thing I can tell them to do is like turn the leg way out. Like, and I'm thinking about sewing memory bears, but I want to sew one for my children. If all goes well. Oh, dog bandanas. Oh yes. I love those too. Do you personalize your dog bandanas with like embroidery or heat transfer vinyl? But yeah, for the memory bears, I always recommend to my students that they go and they use either their own favorite clothes or go to the second hand store. Um, 
that way, if you're doing memory bears, you, you really should practice on clothes, you know, instead of bolts of fabric because it's too different. It, it's totally different whenever you have like a very rare shirt and then bolts of fabric where you can replace it because you can't replace the clothes. Um, yeah, the heat transfer vinyl. Oh, those are so cute. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yep. Um, now, um, have you been part of my newsletter where I like gave some helpful tips and like, um, the tools and stuff that I like to use in mine? I wasn't sure if you were on the newsletter or not. Oh, I also have that in the PDF book in my Etsy. <clears throat> uh, things too that I like to use. Ouch. Let's sign up. Oh yeah. Thank you. That would be great. The um, Sopreneur is definitely for a sewist that would like to like go from a hobbyist to a business owner sewing um, specifically for memory bears and keepsakes. Cause that's, you know, that's my thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that'd be, that's so nice of you to share all this information in your Facebook groups. I really appreciate your support. Are you located in the U.S.? I have a lot of followers over from, like, um, Canada. Uh, did you say the book was on sale? Yeah, it should be. I lowered the price. Um, let me look real quick. Make sure it went through. Uh, oh, no. Wrong Etsy app. Let me go to this one. The, the planner, the, the sewing to sell. Let me make sure that's the right one. Yeah. Yeah. That one I marked down to, um, $9.95. Um, it was regular 35, like $34.99. <clears throat> and then I lowered it to the 995 until the end of the year. Um, but oh, Arizona. Okay, nice. That's very nice. Um, yeah, I have a lot of followers from like Canada and uh, the UK. And I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't, I never even thought about that. <laughs> um, Let's see here, but I'm going to show like, I'm going to show a lot of ornaments on this channel and um, it's like all about memory bears and keepsakes because they go hand in hand. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And then definitely like I give a lot of freebies, business freebies and tips and stuff like that through my um, newsletter too. So that would be a really good resource. Uh, for you. One thing that I always talk about, and I, let me see if I can find it. I don't know if I have it over here. Oh, where is it? I was going to try to find my, I think I put my business binder upstairs. What I do is like with my PDFs that I make, um, I, you know how you print your own PDF. I poke holes in it like the three ring hole binders. And I put it in a binder like this. Oh, if I can reach it. This isn't the exact one, but I put all of them in a binder. And then that way I have all my resources. These are my classes. <laughs> These are the classes that I teach. But um, so all of it goes in like the a business binder is what I call that. Um, because whenever I send out like the freebies, they're always in a PDF. That way, if you want to print them and put them in your own business binder, um, cause that's what I encourage my students to do. And so, um, it's just, it's always helpful. I think to have it like on your hard drive, but also in writing where you can like write your own notes and stuff. But, um, I'm trying to save everybody the headache and frustration that, I had to go through when I started this business because 
this industry does not like to share ideas or tips or like secrets or anything like that. Um, this, well, I shouldn't say it like that. I'm sorry. That didn't come across very nicely. Um, for the most part, they don't really want to, <laughs> to share that stuff. Um, but uh, I, I like to help everybody that I possibly can, um, you know, get get going and maybe help them through some hurdles, maybe if they're in business and they have some hurdles and stuff. Um, okay. All right, let's check this. Let's check this minky foot pot pad and make sure that I didn't skip any anything. Uh, okay, I don't see any holes. We got it on the first try. <laughs> um, to put in a binder. So classes you're speaking of, do you do that online? Yeah, they're all online. Um, and I will have another announcement when the new classes start. All of those will be on... Um, I do all the announcements through the newsletter at that sopreneur.com website. Um, and all of my classes are like super frugally priced. <laughs> um, and then I do like mentoring and coaching and things like that. Um, so, and like I said, I, I like to give freebies with my newsletters. So every month I give a freebie and then that way you can download it and either save it or print it for yourself. Um, I do have some paid resources, but you know, I like to, I like to give things away too. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm getting dry throat here. So here's my bare legs. Yay. With Minky, I successfully got the circles going and then we went ahead and did her little, um, belly. And I can't believe like how perfect does that match? Like this, I had this Minky, um, like in a stash. Oh, thank you. I mean, it matches all, uh, almost perfect. I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. This is great. Yes. And then um, later in another live or something, I will hand stitch the face. And then I already did the sewing of the back of the bear. Um, and I did this in a separate video. And I print my own labels. And so I teach my students how to print and make their own labels instead of having to order them. I mean, obviously you can order them if you'd like, but I like to change my labels up according to the products that I'm selling. Um, and so I just like to print them at home uh, and do them, you know, and I, I again, that's something else I so, uh, show my students. And then, and then the arms are going to be like the legs. So, half will be the minky and half will be the baby blanket. And so I just have to sew those up also. And then this is the back of the head. The back of the head is minky. And um, I, it's about nine o'clock for me right now. And uh, I've been on a live for like an hour, almost an hour and a half. Um, here, I can talk to you. Sorry. <laughs> and so um, I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. And oh, hi, May May Pam. How are you? Everybody, y'all need to go to Made by Pam and follow her. She is so fun. I love to try to catch Pam's lives. So, Pam, I don't know if I ever told you. So, I work full time um, Monday through Friday, and I see that your lives come up at like noon uh, my time. You're welcome, Baker. You're so welcome. Please, um, if you subscribe and ring the bell, you'll be notified. Um, when I come back, but also if you get on that newsletter, I promise, I promise I will announce the next time I go live. I promise. <laughs> but Pam, I always try to get to your lives. I see them like around noon. I'm like, Oh, can I take my break now? You know, I mean, I work for home from home, so I can pretty much take my break. I guess whenever, but it has been crazy busy with the, um, reports we have to do for the health industry that I work in. And um, when I'm in the middle of like a huge, yeah, Pam, I understand. It depends on what's going on. I get that. Like tonight, I was kind of like an impromptu. I wasn't sure if I could get live and I thought, oh, I need to go do that. But um, so we just, we just talked about little bear head and, um, 
oh, you know what? I could probably show you something real quick. Let me see. Okay, so this is the front. I, I promise I'll be done in a minute. But this is the bare belly, right? And we went ahead and stowed on this 9 a.m. Eastern. Right. Is that noon? My that must be noon Eastern then, right? I don't know. I'm really bad with time zones. No. Is that 11 my time? But whenever I see you live, Pam, I completely try to get on there. Um, okay, so remember I was talking about how I sew my bears together? Thank you, Pam. 11, yes. So I try to get on there um, whenever I see your lives and like jump in the best I can. Um, okay. Oh, you're welcome. Well, thank you, Pam, for showing up too tonight. Thank you. Okay, you guys, I'm going to try to show you this. You don't have a time change in Arizona? Oh, that would, we don't, we don't change time. Oh, I would love not to change time. That throws me off all the time. Okay, so I was talking about this pattern, right? And this, whenever, if you guys follow me anytime and I say the original nine piece, what I'm meaning is this, this bear. Everybody thinks of this as um, a memory bear pattern, right? And if you read the directions, listen, I had the most terrible time with the directions and I'm not new to sewing. I've been sewing for 40, 40 years since I was seven, 40 years. I can't even say that out loud. <gasps> Anyways, I've been sewing for 40 years, right? So I'm not new to sewing patterns, but this pattern about drove me nuts. And I'm like, I cannot get this bear's head in the neck and make it look good. I just couldn't. I don't know if my hands get on the way. I don't know what my problem was. So I was determined I was going to find another way. So this is what I teach my students. Once you have the bear belly sewn, however you want, and you have the face put together. Here, let me hold it up. So this is the face. All right. And at this point, if you're going to use um, safety eyes and the safety nose, you can go ahead and put that in. And I show you how to space it. Oh, yes. Yep, I can do that. This is what um, the pattern is now. And they are no longer printing these. Um, my Walmart still had these um, for $4.97 at my Walmart. But like I said, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, I did give a free 22-inch, this pattern, but it's a 22-inch bear pattern in my newsletter. Um, and it will be free all month long. So if you sign up for the newsletter now, when I, may, when I send out the newsletter this weekend, um, you'll be able to download it also. Um, and then one thing I do is I tell my students that they can resize that pattern that I sent to either make it bigger or smaller, medium, however you would like. But it's 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 made like this one. Oh, yeah. Whitney sews. Yes. And she even in the way she teaches, I think she does a great job, but I still could not get the bear's head and neck to work. Like I said, I think I think my fingers just don't work that way. So this is how I teach all my students, and I'm going to share the secret with you. Once you have the bare belly sewn, here's the face, okay? And I have it, like, I have it upside down. You're going to take the center seam of the face and the center seam of the belly, and you're going to match those up. Um, I don't usually pin anymore, but um, you can... And then you match up, let me see if I can get this, the ends like this. And this one here. Oh, I think I need new pins. I definitely need, I need new sewing pins. So whenever you look at the bear, the head, obviously it will look correctly. <laughs> Once it's sewn, it lays flat. Um, then you've got your bear like this, okay? And then here's the bear back. And I already have it tagged and I already have the hole in it. And here's the neck. 
And here's the middle seam. Are you able? Hopefully, you guys can see what I'm saying. Um, where's my head? Where's the back of my head? This is the head. Give me one second. <clears throat> Give me one second. Let me sew the back of this head real quick, and then I will um, show you my little secret for my. I call it my teddy bear sandwich. <gasps> Yeah, teddy bear sandwich. All right, let me sew this this minky here. Oh, if it just doesn't slide on me, we'll, we will be good to go. Give me one second. And I just, like when you're sewing on a curve, I like to tell my students to take their time. There, there's no race. Lift up your pedal foot, you know, your foot a little bit to... Um, Release some of that pressure, I guess. Um, just take your time. Adjust your fabric as you need it. Give me one second. Okay. And right here. Okay, so this is the back of the head, okay? Now, let me ask what you to get your tags. Oh, Shamir, Shamir, Shamira, yes. Um, I actually teach my students how to make their own tags. Um, so I do have the playlist. It's, it's um, the video, the how-to video on this playlist. And if you ever want a live, I can definitely do a live for you. But basically, I do all my tag printing myself. So I have a basic HP inkjet printer <clears throat> my husband got for me at Walmart a few years ago. Give me one second. And <clears throat> I get my HP ink refills for super cheap every month. They're delivered to me. Um, and I have the link underneath these videos on how you can get your own inkjet ink super cheap. It's the real stuff. Um, I, I literally save hundreds of dollars on my inkjet ink because I use my inkjet printer for sublimation also. And I'm also teaching all of that in my online classes also for memory bears and keepsakes. Um, but I print all my own tags and that way I can change them up anytime I want to. Um, it's just super, it's just saved, it has saved me hundreds and hundreds of dollars in my business. Um, but yeah, so this is the back of the head. All right. And then this is the bear's back. So like the bottom, <clears throat> the bear's bottom. And I do the same thing. I take the back of the head and I line it up, line up the seam to the head or <laughs> the head seam with the back seam like this and I just I line them up the best I can here and like I said this is Minky and Minky and I are not friends <laughs> all right give me one second and so now I will literally I will sew right here across here and I will go ahead and show that to you since it's in my hands. All right, one second. And I tell my students always move your pins because they do break under, they can break and ricochet and get you in your eyes. Um, and they can also ruin your sewing machine. And I know I don't have money to replace my sewing machine. <laughs> so, all right. Or, or replace my eye. I can't even do that. So <clears throat> we just, I always teach them in all my classes, everything I do is online. Um, yes, it will be definitely. Let me see. I've studied that method for printing with HP as well with printable fabric. I've not tried my tags yet, just face masks. Ooh, I've never tried face mask designs. I'd love to see that too. I've got to see your balloons too. I just think that's the neatest idea ever. Okay, so here's your bear. And this is the bear's back of the head and their body. Okay. 
And then, so you would do the same thing. You would sew right here across the neck um, for the face and the belly. Right here. So I'll just go real slow here. And then, um, whoops. I just wanted to show you this real quick tonight before I before I jumped off the live. And then, but yeah, if, if you guys, um, I've been trying to get to a thousand subscribers and I just, I love all of your support. I just love you guys. I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you. Um, this is the bare front. So you, now I don't even have to mess with trying to fit the head <clears throat> into the body. And it was just, it was a completely hot mess. Um, yes, it was on the table next to where Dave was sitting. So now that we have the head and the front of the face and the front of the belly here, all I do next is pin, because here's the legs. And let me pin one here and let me see if I can, I want to see if I can <clears throat> get this on here for you. And I do have, um, I think I have a full length video in my playlist from 2021 about this. Oh, Pam, this was so much easier. I had to figure this out on my own back in 2017, because I knew following that pattern, I would never make another one. <laughs> I was like, I'm done. I'm done with that pattern, the directions. Um, you know, it was just, this is just so much easier. And I call this my, my, um, I, I call this, um, my teddy bear sandwich <laughs> because it's just so, so much easier. Um, and like I always tell my students, please practice on your own clothes or go to the thrift store and get some clothes. Don't ever use um, all. Thank you, Baker Wannabe, for sharing that. Thank you so much. I, I always remind my students that using fabric is not going to help you if you want to do something with memory bears because the bears are made out of clothing and you can't replace that. Whereas if you're in the mindset of using fabric, you're like, oh, I'll just cut a new piece. Well, you can't do that with clothes. So, um, so basic now, obviously when I show you this, I'll make sure it's straight before I sew it, but then your, your legs are right here. Oh no, I'm freezing. Well, I hope I come back. Oh, thank you, Pam. This, the polka dot is the baby's receiving blanket that the mom gave me to make the bear for her. This was handmade. This rose um, patch was handmade and I went ahead and sewed that on. And then the mom wants this vintage um, Garfield sewn to the back um, of the bear. So that will go on the back um, once the bear is stuffed. But so you'll do the same thing with the bare arms. You'll, you can put the arms anywhere you want. When you sew, when you make your teddy bear sandwich, you can put the arms clear up here in the neck area if you want to, or you can adjust them so they look like the bear is hugging and reaching out. Um, because like if you put them up here by the neck, it looks like the bear's arms are laying on their side. See, because that's like, my my customers have never wanted it like my customers when they saw the picture where the bear could actually have its arms reaching out like it's hugging you that's just been how they've wanted me to do it ever since um but this bear sandwich listen i'll tell you um it is it is so so much easier and it's less less of a headache at least at least that's my personal experience <laughs> but um yeah, so the arms are going to look just like the legs um, as far as the minky with the polka dots. And then I will film the rest of this. I also use fusible. Yes, yes, definitely, Shamira. 
I like I t I know you're probably sick of me saying this, but I always tell my students to please interface, use interfacing on all of their bears, unless, and I've had customers that did not want interfacing. They wanted the pair so it could be like stretched out and what I call mushy. Um, they didn't want any type of stability at all. And I'm like, are you sure you don't want are you sure you don't want stability? And they're like, no, I don't. I want it real smushy and squishy. And I said, oh, I will. All right. I will make it that way for you, you know, because I mean, it's after all, it's their bear. But I did let them know, okay, it can get stretched out of shape. And they were, they were okay with that. But like even this baby blanket, I know it's hard to see, but I have that interfacing on the minky. You can definitely see it here on the minky and also on the baby blanket, um, the knit fabric, I'm, so minky and knit fabric are one of those things that they, I, we just don't play well together, but I do, I do accept knit. Um, and I have always, um, might wear out. It does Pam, you're right. It does wear out faster without the interfacing. Um, and I, I let them know, um, but, you know, I, I guess it is whatever, whatever it is that the customer wants, you know, you, we can only do so much um, to educate them on that. Um, but like, you know, like I was saying, the um, knit, I do accept knit and I let them know that it's best to interface it. Um, and thankfully, my last order was 10 memory bears and no, I'm sorry not the last one. The last one was 18 memory bears. And, um, she wanted four, five, five or six of them with a knitted vest. So this was the vest pattern. And I, I'll show you my sewing technique for this vest pattern too. Um, because again, that, that, um, <laughs> The directions for that pattern is not my friend, <laughs> but I will show you. Maybe I'll find a knitted sweater somewhere and make a knitted vest just to show you how I use the interfacing and I sew this together um, because, <clears throat> you know, she wanted it. So, you know, I obviously did it I um, and she was happy and it turned out, I'm so thankful. It turned out really, really good. So I was ecstatic about that. Um all right, everybody. I want to thank you so much for being here and supporting me and talking to me. I was so afraid I'd be here by myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're on the free newsletter, um, I will announce next time I'm going live and um, I will continue to give you those um, business resources. And um, for the rest of the year, my Etsy shop has the business resources but the first of the year, I'm going to close my Etsy shop and just do everything through on my Amazon author page. Um, just because Etsy has been um, a little, I just don't think that they're all that friendly for makers like us. Um, but I still, I still did show. Oh, thank you, Shamira. I will definitely go look for you. I've got to see your memory bears in the balloon. I have to see that. I have to. Um, I think that's the neatest thing ever. Um, but yeah, I just, I went ahead and uh, last week showed you guys how you could do like private listings for Etsy listings for customers. If you didn't have a, like a, your own other shop, like Shopify or something like that. Um, Shopify is just not in my budget right now. It's, it's just not. So what I do is I, have my own websites, my own domain, um, hostings and things like that. Um, because I do things classy and frugal and I kind of like to have control over what's being done to my website. So, um, but yeah, that's just something I did show about private listings on Etsy. Cause I mean, it's still a good resource. I'll give you that, but at least for my PDFs and stuff, I think that, um, it's probably just better to do the Amazon author page, but I will just, I'll let you guys all know that in the newsletter too. Yeah. Etsy's not welcoming the makers. It was, was more like used to be, or like folksy, you know what Baker, I, 
I noticed that. I have noticed when Etsy first started, it was definitely maker friendly, right? I mean, it was great, but now there's so much mass produced items that makers, unless we're paying a lot of money for the marketing, we just don't get shown. We really don't. Um, I do my own search engine optimization and all of that because I did that for 15 plus years as a virtual assistant. I was an online business manager um, for million heirs, <laughs> literally million makers. Um, and I was like with the SEO, publicity, marketing and things like that. And I just, I like Etsy's trying to be like Amazon. They don't care if it's handmade. Yeah. That's the sad thing. It truly is. I think that the, I think for 2023 makers need to come together and support one another. I really do. Um, I don't have the money to put into marketing and buying the Etsy's ads. It's too expensive. Uh, and it's, it's a thing. It's called pay to play. That's my term. And I can't afford to pay to play their game. I just, I don't have that kind of budget at this point. In order for me to do that, I would have to double or triple my memory bear and keepsake prices. And I'm not going to do that. Yes, folks, see, that would be really nice to have in the USA. As long as they stayed user <laughs> maker friendly, right? But um, I just, I think that really one thing in the marketing and publicity world, um, word of mouth marketing, that is the one thing that has grown my business. When I was a virtual assistant, I went from making like a hundred dollars in one month to making over a thousand dollars. Yeah, we should, we should write folksy Baker. That would be a good idea. We were massive emails, right? <laughs> but you know, so I, I literally went from like, a, um, it was not, it was maybe a hundred dollars or $200, um, to over a thousand dollars within four weeks. <clears throat> and that was strictly from word of mouth marketing in my itty bitty tiny small town. Now, I mean, that was my virtual assistant services, right? So it's a little bit different as a maker, but it, it doesn't have to be that difficult. Um, one thing that I remind my students is that they, they get kind of, um, I don't know what the word is, not depressed or anything like that, just kind of um, not upset, disheartened, I guess, when they when I teach them how to do competition research and to look at their competitors. But what I ask them to do is, is this. Instead of wearing the glasses of saying, oh, that's my, com my, that's my competition. I can never be that good. I can never do that. I ask them to put on a different whole mindset, different glasses, I guess, of, of saying, okay, let's look at this through a different view. Let's look at a different, a different lens of saying, okay, this is Sally's business and this is your business. And yes, you both might sell and make memory bears and you might use the exact same pattern, but her demographics and your demographics are not going to be the same. Even if you're in the same zip code, she's not going to get the clients that you want or customers. I'm still saying clients and you're not going to get who, who she's trying to get at, go after um, because everybody's attracted to a, to one another in different ways. Um, you have a different style. Um, I, as a born again Christian, I believe that we all have unique skills and abilities and that shows in our art. You could have the exact same fabric that I have, right? With the same pattern and we sit next to each other and we're working on the same thing. They're not going to look the same. They're not because we all have that unique creativity and abilities and skill sets. So um, personality. And so I always ask my students to, you know, whenever I, whenever I'm teaching this um, market research and the competition, let's don't compare yourself to anybody but yourself. So um, that seems to help them out a lot. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I think I've talked enough for you <laughs> tonight. You're probably tired of hearing from me. But again, 
be on the newsletter and stay, um, talk to me, share your, share your YouTube with me. If you have YouTube, um, let's help other makers, um, get together and just create a really warm, welcoming, um, community. Um, thank you, Pam. You have a good night too. Thank you so much. Um, Baker, I think competition is good. It helps the market keeping integrity. Absolutely. Hi, um, for people that are looking for well-made products. Exactly. Competition is definitely good. Um, especially when you know that there's that expectation, right? Um, so yeah, no, I totally get that a sneak peek. I have a sneak peek here on YouTube. Oh, um, what is your channel, Shamira? You can put that below or are you able to tag your channel in the chat? And then that way, whoever's here, we can um, come on over and see your channel too. Baker, if you have a channel, Pam, if you're still here, um, you can definitely tag your um, channels in the chat if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to. Okay. Thank you, Baker. That's okay. Only if, only if I have a wrench. Only if you have a wrench. Pam, what are you talking about? You only have a wrench. Oh, no. I didn't know that. Is that new? Oh, you know what, Pam? Is that if you have... Is that... I think it's a moderator. Oh. You know what, Pam? Is it being a moderator for our channel? Oh. I didn't know that. Do you think that has to do with, like, having a, a 1,000 subscriber base? And then, like, YouTube will um, unlock that? I wonder about that. Hmm. Well, I mean, if you want, if you just, if you click on Made by Pam, I think you guys will be able to um, see her channel. You have to be a moderator to pin on someone else's channel. Oh, to stop spam. Well, all right. Well, um, I think it's, yeah, Baker, I think you're right. Definitely. I always forget about spam ruins the fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Spammers and trolls. All right, guys. I am, it's no matter what your sub count. Okay, Pam, can you write the name without a link? Um, yeah, isn't it, Pam, isn't your channel made by Pam? I'm not trying to be silly, but that's what it is, right? So you, if we click on your name, would it take us to your channel? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Baker, if you click on made by Pam, um, you can get there. Oh, okay. Here you go. This is Shamir's channel right there. So you just click on Shamir's customs. You can put the link being that it's your channel. Okay, that makes sense. So you can put the link if it's your own channel. But yeah, I mean, I'm all about community, you guys. So um, if you uh, ever want to collaborate on something fun, let me know. Um, that's one thing for 2023 I want to do more of. I want to do some fun collaborations. I mean, it doesn't have to just be memory bears and keepsakes, but... Um, I just, I like fun. I like community. I like, like tonight was fun talking to all of you. And um, it, it just, it can get lonely sometimes behind the sewing machine. <laughs> all right. All right, ladies, have a wonderful night and I will see you. Um, Sopreneur.com newsletter. And then back on here um, next week. All right. Be safe. And if you're not ready for Christmas, you probably want to start now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to take my own advice. 
<laughs> and get it done. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye, ladies. Yes, it is a learning curve. Definitely, Shamir. It's definitely a learning curve. And you got to be comfortable. And that was my biggest problem. I was just not comfortable. I felt so awkward. And I said, fully, I'm just going to go and have fun and make some friends. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you so much.